Welcome to the Support Center. My name is Tom. We're going to talk about interactive forms, also called I-forms. So an interactive form is used to capture information from your families. So basically, they go to your website and they complete this form. Maybe it's asking them a few different questions. They click Submit and then it sends that form to you as an admin and or you can view it on your website as an administrator. So let's go ahead and look at how to build this as an admin, some of the different options. I won't go into all the details because this video would be just simply too long to go into all the minutia of what you can do here. But I'll show you how to build a basic form and then how a family can submit it on their site. So if I come over to the admin site, go to pages, the first thing I do is I click on this plus custom page. I give my form a name. Maybe this is a medical release form. I'm going to leave all the other fields alone for right now. Most of them are somewhat self-explanatory, but I'm creating a page type of interactive form. And then I would add that page. So it automatically takes me over to the ability to add fields. But the first thing I really want to do since I'm making a brand new page is I want to add this to my navigation. So on my admin site, I would go to appearance and then navigation. If I go over to orphaned, I should see that new page. I call it medical release form. I'm going to drop it right there for now. And I'm going to scroll down and save those changes. Come back to my family site, refresh it. And here's the form I created. Again, I have no fields. There's nothing for them to actually complete and submit. So come back here to my admin site and let's just kind of quickly browse over some of the different options. So back to pages, interactive forms. So one thing you really might want to do is you want to know when someone completes this form. You can always log in your admin site. You can click on completed. You can view these, but maybe you want to get a copy in your email as well. So I would click on the basic page title, the link name I gave it. It comes back to this page we've already seen before with these fields. Bunch of fields in here, you can or don't need to complete them all. But I'm going to come down here to email address to send submitted iForms to, and I'm going to put my email address in there. That way, when somebody submits this form, I get a copy of it. Okay. If I had multiple email addresses, I could put a comma, and I could put the next person's email address in here get the ID. I'm just going to send it to one for right now. Click on update and there it saved it. So there we have some of the basic shell of this page created. All I've done here is send submitted iForms to my email address. Lots of other fields in here, but we'll leave those alone for now. Let's start building the page. So interactive forms. So to build the page or the iForm, I need to add fields. In fields are the building blocks of the page is one way to look at this. So I would add fields to capture maybe their name. Um, maybe do they agree to a statement of faith. Uh, maybe have them attach a copy of their insurance card, something like that. So I click on this plus fields up here. And these are the different field types that I have available to me. Most of these are pretty self-explanatory. So maybe the first thing I want to do is I want to capture their name. Label and text box, yes, it's required. I would give it a label. Can always edit these later and I would add it. So what does that look like if I come back to my family site and I refresh? There it is, I've captured asking for their name. The red asterisk means it's required. Remember that was one of the options I could make it required or not required right down here. I can even change the size of that box. There's some display changes that you can do. So come back here to fields. I would just continue to add fields until I have my page built out the way that I want it to be built out. Um, maybe I want to capture the gender, you know, If I can type here. So with these three field types, radio buttons, check boxes, and drop down list box, I have to give a label and a choice. So here is the label I'm giving it, and now I need to give them choices. And 
at it. So let's see what this looks like. If I come over here and refresh, there I can see the different choices that I gave them. And I can come back here to that and I can edit those and add more choices if I wanted to. If I don't like the way these are lined up, I can actually change the order. If I come back here and refresh, you'll see the, the order changed as well. Okay. So those are some of the basic things I can do. I'm going to capture an email address as well to show you how that works. So add a new field and email address, make it required. Get that right there. Add the field. Okay, so if I come back to pages, refresh it so you can see what it looks like. There's that field we added. So if I come back here to pages and I go to interactive form, the next things I can do here is completion settings. So after a family submits this or completes it, they're going to be taken to a new page. And here's the information that you can add to that page. So this is what appears for text at the top of the page. You can change that if you want to, add to it. Let's say I wanted to email a copy out to that family. Here's the catch. You need to ask for their email address. And we did. We added an email address field. It's right there. So give it a subject. I don't need to give the email a body, but I can. And I need to highlight their email address. The reason you're highlighting those is because you could actually ask for multiple email addresses and you want to highlight the one you want this email to. And then at the very bottom of this page are some financial things. Maybe um, something like that. Okay. And then I'm going to put the fee in here. And I can pick which accounting category. There we go. Okay, so now what does this look like when we submit it? So I'm going to refresh this because we've made some changes. Let's submit one. That submit it. So now it took me right to that completion page. Remember, here's that text that I showed you. I come back here and show you what that looks like. Here's that text. I can change it. You can see it there. I put the payment text out here and it should have sent me an email. Okay. I didn't put a legitimate email address in, so I won't receive one, but you get the idea. And then that amount we actually created this PayPal button. If I were to click on that, it'll take me to PayPal and ask me to pay. So that is how you build the basic of the form. Now there's just a few other things you can do here. Come back here to my admin site. Let's say I want to view those completed forms. I would go to Pages, Interactive Form. Now, I told it to send me a copy of my email, and it will do that. But I can also view these on the admin site. So if I come over here and click on Completed, this would show me all the completed forms. I can view individual forms. I can edit forms, delete them. I can search and filter and do a few different things. I can download these to a spreadsheet and sort through them too if I needed to. Um, a little caveat here is this user field is populated with the person that was logged in. So if I actually had the public complete this form, this would be blank. It wouldn't show their username because it doesn't know who they are. Okay, so that's just a catch there. Uh, what else do you might want to see here? Back here on pages, interactive forms. If I come here, let's say I wanted to tie this to the request membership process right here. Make this part of the membership registration process. If I check that box, then when a new family submits their registration for the first time, it will actually show them a link to this page at the bottom of the request membership process. Another checkbox here is attach this form to members. If I do that, and I can actually show you this one, update it, and I come over here, what it does is it adds it to the top of their family profile. So come over here to the profile, and there we can see it. It adds it right there. This add new, let's say we only wanted them to complete one. Don't ever want them to do it more than once. I could come back here. And this little option, don't allow members to create multiples. If I check that, see where it says add new. If I refresh, that add new goes away. So I can edit this one, but it won't let me submit multiples. 
Another nice little feature here, maybe you're capturing some type of information that you want all your families to see. You know, medical form isn't a good example here, but maybe you're capturing library information or recommended reading resources. If I come over to the I form, click on the name of the form itself, I can see this link to this I forms responses. And if we provide this to a families somehow, again, they have to be logged in to view this stuff. If I provide this to the families, I'm going to copy it. Come over here to a new tab. I'm logged in. So if I refresh it, it'll actually throw that up on a screen for me. So maybe you're capturing information that you want families to be able to view and see. Okay. So there are some of the basics of an iForm. Again, I won't go through every minutia detail because there are many, many details, many different things you can use this for, especially when it comes to the different field types that you can add. But there's the basics. If you need more assistance and have questions, you can always go to your admin homepage and click on the Create a Ticket button.